Welcome. I'd like to share with you a tutorial that can be really helpful for your neck. You could use this as a standalone practice to supplement a longer practice, use it as a movement break, or just simply when you're wanting some relief for your neck. We're going to use a therapy ball, a cotton yoga strap, and a yoga block. A couple of the things I'm going to clear up to begin with is just establishing our landmarks. The areas that we're going to address with some release work with rolling out and using the block is this area where your skull meets your neck. So for many of us, that's just that, that hairline. So just follow the crease where your skull meets your neck. And if you take your fingertips and sort of press in there, likely you'll feel a little bit of tenderness. We have a lot of muscles that attach there and from a lot of posture, situations, we can get a lot of tension there. And so we start to limit the capacity for the neck to rotate and extend where it's supposed to. We shift the load to a lower portion of the neck, which isn't designed for that. And that's one of the reasons it can break down and get cranky. The next area that we're going to work on that is again, also influenced by posture demands in a modern world is this area by your shoulder blade. So if you take your hand and you can kind of feel that upper inner border of your shoulder blade, again, if you press in, chances are there's some tenderness there. We have a muscle called levator scapula and it attaches at the upper inner border of your shoulder blade and into the neck. And as its name suggests, it lifts the shoulder blade. And a lot of us end up without even being aware of it of elevating our shoulder blade for long periods of time and the muscle can kind of get stuck. So we are going to use the block to kind of roll out that area where your skull meets the neck. And we're going to use a therapy ball to get into what we call levator scapula. We're also going to be getting some of the upper fibers of trapezius. Then we're going to help strengthen safely and effectively using a yoga strap and then see if we notice any changes. So let's first establish a baseline. So just stand somewhere that uh, you will be able to be consistent with your before and after measurements. And you can turn to your left and then maybe get something in your sight line. I often like to draw a line from my nose and then turn to your right. And the same idea, how far can you go comfortably? So first step is we're going to get into that suboccipital area where the skull meets the neck. Now, two ways you can do this is taking your yoga block and, and resting, kind of perching that area on the edge of the block that's closest to you. For a lot of us, we find that we don't get as much um, targeted attention. And often if you tip the block, so now that edge that's further away is where I'm going to be resting that part. And for a lot of us, it just feels better. So you can rest your head and just see how that feels. And maybe you can get some sensation there. You could try tipping it. So now that back edge, and it's just, it's a little sharper, not too sharp. Sometimes you can just find that sweet spot and it will stay unassisted. I'm just going to keep my hands here. And right where my skull meets my neck, I've got the edge of the block. And then I'm just going to slowly turn my head from side to side. I'm getting some feedback here. It's not too much. We don't want to terrorize the tissue. Just create a bit of feedback. So just sort of gently go from side to side. And then next time, maybe when you go all the way to your right, just sort of stay there and then even do some like little pulsations. And then go back through to center, then maybe take it all the way to the left as far as you can comfortably. 
and then maybe some little pulsations here. And then let's carefully go from side to side. Sometimes if I feel a headache coming on, I'll grab a yoga block and do this. And many times I'm able to nip it in the bud so it doesn't progress. Okay, just pause here. We're next going to move on to the next part, which is that levator scapula. So again, take your hand to the opposite shoulder, feel that shoulder blade kind of just up and in, so really close to where your neck meets your trunk. So I'm gonna get the ball and just shift so I can place the ball right near that upper inner border of the shoulder blade. Then I'm gonna take my yoga block and slide, pelvis, slide it under the pelvis. And you might just need to adjust the ball there and just kind of allow gravity to secure the ball here. You can feel that. Now kind of shrug your shoulder toward your ear and return. Shrug to your ear and return. Ear, return, and ear, return. Oof, I feel that. Bring your arms up toward the ceiling and then bend the elbows so you can hold on to your elbows making genie arms. And then just start to take the arms from side to side. And notice how the position of your arms can influence the sensation that you get here. You can even sort of turn your head away and drop your chin and notice if that changes things. Then release the arms and make a goal poster, a cactus arm. And then from there, can you reach back Almost like you're making a snow angel and then bring the elbows back down and then reach and then bring the elbows back down and reach and bring the elbows back down. And then just take the ball out and pause here. You feel a sensation of, of lightness. Now let's do the other side. So upper inner border of your shoulder blade, really close to where your neck meets your trunk. And then just position the ball. And maybe kind of play around with it. You should feel some sensation there. Just let gravity kind of pin the ball for a moment and then shrug your shoulder to your ear on that side and release. Whew. Shrug and release. Shrug and release and shrug and release. Bring your arms up toward the ceiling, hold on to your elbows, and then gently rock the elbows from side to side, your little genie arms. And just sort of take note of how the sensation may change when you change position of the arms. Maybe even experiment with changing the position of your head. Turn your head away, drop your chin. How does that change things? 
When you turn your head away and drop your chin, you're getting a, a stretch of your le levator scapula while you have that therapy ball there. And then open the arms up, your cactus arms. Just notice where you can go here. And then reach your arms like you're making a snow angel. Draw the elbows back. Reach the arms. Draw the elbows down. And reach. And down. And reach. And down. Let's take ah, that ball out. And lift the hips up. And let's come back to a standing position and we're going to use the yoga strap. And here we're going to do our resisted isometrics, which are a really safe and effective way to strengthen the neck. And if we want to make lasting change, we need to strengthen the tissues. So you can take the strap onto the back of your head, just gently tuck your chin and press your head straight back. Five, four, three, two, one, and release. So you should feel the muscles at the back of your neck engaging. Gently tuck the chin, get a little taller, press your head straight back. Five, four, three, two, one, and release. Now we wanna use uh, work the muscles at the side of the neck. So you can take the strap, Push into the strap, five, four, three, two, one, and release. And press five, four, three, two, one, and release. We'll take the strap, other side. I apologize for ruining your hairdo. And then push. So now I'm going to work the muscles on the other side. Press five, four, three, two, one, and release. And push five, four, three, two, one, and release. Now we want to work the muscles at the front of the neck. Now, for most of us, those muscles are weaker than ideally we'd like, common phenomenon. And so we don't want to drop the chin or extend the neck. We just want to push straight forward. Five, four, three, two, one, and release and push. Five, four, three, two, one, and release. Now we're going to take the strap onto the top of our head and we're gonna push straight up. We're gonna get nice and tall. Five, four, three, two, one, release, and press up. Five, four, three, two, one, and release. So I'm gonna go back to my corner, just have a little more consistency with establishing baselines and turn to your left. Oh my goodness, what a difference. Turn to your right and come back. And so it's really rewarding to see the changes that can be made. If we want lasting change, we need repetition. So repetition of the appropriate input over time can lead and yield lasting change. So I hope you found this little tutorial helpful and that you do it frequently. Bye for now.